Welcome to Hound TV. I'm your host, Stephen Pam, and this is Rusty. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic, poo. And we're also going to Buckingham Palace to meet a corgi. Well, okay, only one part of that's true. No, no. Hound TV. Because every dog has its day. Amanda has written to us and invited us to come out and meet her corgi, Bosco. Our Hound of the Week is Bosco. This is Bosco, and Bosco's humans are Scott and Amanda. Now, Bosco is, of course, a corgi, but you guys live out here on acreage. A corgi seems like an unusual choice. Tell us how you came to have a corgi. Well, corgis are actually um, very, very active. What they were bred for is um, herding of short Welsh hairy cattle. So you get short Welsh hairy doggies to, to look after them. And um, so, so they're, they're very much farm dogs, like um, like Australian cattle dogs. They've got the same sort of personality. And in fact, Bosco has some cattle dog friends who he gets along very well with, even though he's a lot shorter than them. As you can tell from the noise, the two things that corgis are bred for is uh, uh, biting mm -hmm. and barking. He's good and at barking. He's very good at barking. He only, he'll only bite the other dog in the ball. <laughs> not, not people. He doesn't bite people. Um, and he only bites the other dog as, as play. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're nippy and, um, and barky. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, so I think the comment was when we were first looking at buying a corgi was you can teach them to talk very easily, but you can't teach them to shut up. <laughs> Bosco? Sure, sure. But the reason we chose a corgi was um, we built our house. What, about five years ago and as soon as we had a house we were like right we've wanted a dog for ages and now's the time to get one so we hopped onto the net and found a couple of forms that told you you know choose the traits of dogs that you would like um short haired you know friendly personality reasonably independent all of those things and corgis were one of the dogs that came up and did bosco fit the bill well then did, did he meet your expectations <laughs> absolutely he's a he's a Gorgeous, he's way bigger he's than He's not behaving himself very well now. We, uh, when we were looking up, they said the biggest ones will get to about uh, 15 kilos. Because he's a Pembroke corgi. There's two types. There's cardigan corgis and Pembroke. Pembroke's the smaller type, this one. He's also the prettier one. Corgis are also very prone to being overweight, so we have to watch how much food he has and how much exercise he has. And actually, um, in the two years since we've had this little guy, this is Rafi, Bosco actually lost a couple of kilos because this one keeps him on the go all of the time. So with all of the exercise... They're actually pretty much the same weight, which right. actually makes it very That's good because it it they play tugging games they play and they're very players. well matched. Yeah, these two like to play ball. Oh, they, they love ball. Everything. So they get they play ball till they almost drop at least every day. So like, you when I say at least every day, I'm sometimes it's twice. Yes. That's actually a corgi trait as well, is that they'll get very excited and they won't ever stop. Um, until they fall over unless you mm. stop them. They get excited and uh, they to just the go, 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 go. He'll go until he throws up. Mm. He'll, just, <laughs> he'll, just, he'll just keep um, keep running and pushing and jumping and doing as much as he can until he falls over. If we go away, we'll, we always take Bosco with us, so we'll take him. We um, Well, when we go anywhere driving, we can, and we go away to Dalesford or something, we'll take him with We've us. We've actually taken him hiking yeah. with us. Yeah. Wouldn't think a corgi hiking, but... <laughs> So he's alright to walk all day with you? He walks all day. By about the third day, he's, he's just <laughs> plodding he's along behind us. Because the first day, he, he doubles or triples our distance because he'll, um, he'll run ahead, look at things, and run off to the side and look at things and come back and follow us around. Second day, he slows down a bit, but that's okay. About the third day, he'll just sit between us. So if Amanda's in front, he'll sit straight behind and behind that, right, right on her feet. Let me just walk walk in a straight line like that but uh, the first night we took him hiking with us that night we set up the tent and we were like you know is he going to be okay going into a tent you know it's an enclosed space he's not used to it Boom. he was straight he in undid the zip and he ran the, in there and laid out on the end of the sleeping bag he was he was fantastic no, we got this for it oh, it's a dry as a bone coat right. and these two uh, both have coats now because sometimes they spend the whole day outside yeah and um we just feel a little bit more comfortable with them having a little bit of coat on. They've got a lovely shelter outside. This time of year, it's because we're up a bit higher, we're 
few hundred metres, it's actually a bit colder. So when it's, you know, two or three degrees in the city, it's minus two here. Yep. And um, so if you leave him outside all day, it's, it's a bit of a cruel. Yep. So put this on him and it keeps him dry at least. Great. So most of the time they're actually uh, home or somebody's home because there's uh, four people, the four adults that live here. But when they're not, they live in here. But um, Rafi, the, uh, the taller one, actually got to jump straight over this fence. So what we've done is put up a fence right at the top. And it's actually part of this whole section we're putting a big fence up to also stop the birds getting into the vegetable garden. Okay. They're paint lids so, or, or uh, plaster and all that sort of stuff for building houses. And um, Bosco always ends up with a hole in them, which is quite convenient. Ah! In here. But they fly fairly well and they're, they're a lot more... They Durable. last a lot longer than a, than a than normal the ones, yeah. Like a normal frisbee like this one, uh, he just cracks them. Um, even though this one's actually a bit funny shape now anyway, you can see the dog <laughs> might. But he can, the other one won't hurt them. But these things last for ages. And this here was a, this, a special dog one. This was a dog one. Indestructible. <laughs> cool. And um, yeah, and they're great because you can fold them up. And we've got another one of these so we take for hiking because it's soft. Have you seen these? This here is a ball thrower for dogs. Well, I suppose you could use it for training people to play tennis as well, but it's for dogs. And um, I call them Wimmerers. I'm sure they're called something else. If you know what they're called, send us an email and let us know. Woof at howtv.com. But seriously, it goes like this. Without grass. Without grass. And it's got this. Hey! Backsaver. Going backsaver. Okay, well, that's uh, Bosco and Rafi and Scott and Amanda on Hound TV. Thanks for talking to us. You're very welcome. You're welcome. And if you want to know more about corgis, drop by houndtv.com. Poo, droppings, feces, crap, whatever you want to call it, doggy doos can be a real problem. And I'm not just talking about when you step in it, uh, dog poo left around the place is a problem for the environment and it can also cost you a lot of money. Dog poo contains a lot of harmful bacteria like E. coli and when it makes its way to our waterways, washes away from wherever your dog's uh, left it and you've left it, uh, it can make those waterways unswimmable and uh, dangerous to people who want to play in boats and stuff like that, which could be you and your kids. A lot of uh, local governments will have things like this as a little uh, uh, pouch. And this just hooks onto your dog's lead when you're going for a walk. So get one of those, and that way you'll never forget because you'll always have it with you when you're walking your dog. Uh, leaving poo behind can also cost you a lot of money. Uh, in some areas you actually can get fined for walking your dog without having poo bags with you. Is this yours? Did you do that? Is that your poo? That's your poo, isn't it? But you can't blame this guy. Dogs need to poo, so it's up to you to pick it up. I'll show you how it's done. Look at this. That is a monster amount of plot. That's a big one. There we go. Now we found some surveys about whether people pick up their dog's poo and if they don't, why they don't. And fortunately most dog owners these days do pick up their dog's poo and I hope you're one of them. But uh, people cite various odd reasons for not wanting to like I only have a small dog or when the dog poos in the bushes no one's going to step in it. And don't think just because your dog hasn't done one on the footpath that you don't need to pick it up. All of the poo washes into our waterways, so it's still just as much of a problem. So uh, remember that um, it's not just about the, the mess factor. We've all had to clean poo off the bottom of our shoes with a stick, and that's not nice, is it? But it's also, it, it really can harm um, other animals and also uh, make our waterways really yuck. Do you clean up your own poo, Rusty? Do you clean up your own poo? Hmm?